Hi, Marley. Are you there? Can you hear me? Hey, Janelle. Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now, Janelle? Yes, although it's not coming okay. through my headphones, so I think I just need to do my video audio thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I set it to your logic or your headphone setting, and it should work. Yeah. It's oh, hopefully. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. I have your slides, correct? Yes, I think so. I sent them to Annie. All right, perfect. Thank you. Okay, if you need them, let me know. I'll be here uh, fiddling. All right, thanks. Janelle, do your um, slides begin with the Faithful Families Plus slide? Yes. Sorry. I still don't know if you can hear me or not. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Because, Annie, I'm just inserting your photo there so I know where the break is. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hi, Kelly. This is Laura Lee Jones. Can you hear me? Um, could you email me your slides, please? Um, I'd like to put them in the presentation. I'm typing my email address in the chat box.
Laura Lee, do you need any help sending anything up? I think I have it. Um, could you guys check and um, make sure that you can navigate these slides? I don't see them yet. Okay, they're showing up on mine. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see. Yeah, it looks like Kelly can't see them yet either. Mm. Oh, goodness. I'll pop over there real quick. Okay. don't want to share my desktop. Um, I had loaded the content and it is showing up on mine but then I, I and it shows as a navigation. Wait a minute, let me get it up there again. This box here. Okay. And see, that's that's what I was seeing. So I can't figure out why. Uh -huh. I never had to do that before. Annie says she had preloaded these. So, oops, I. Um, Kelly, can you see these? Can you see the slides? No, she can't.
Okay, I wanted to check to see, Kelly, if you can see the, yeah, okay, perfect. <laughs> I know that there was a little bit of trouble joining um, by the teleconference. I don't know what's going on with that, but it was having, there's a little bit of trouble with that. Uh, do we have Sharon on teleconference? Um, can you uh, hear Sharon's me? on the online with us, okay. Yes, okay, perfect. Um, and Kelly, could you please test okay. your microphone? You hit talk to test it. Kelly, try your microphone again. Okay, so we're going to wait just a couple of minutes and let uh, Kelly work out her audio difficulties and then we'll be beginning. Okay, how about this? Is everyone able to hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. Perfect. Thank you. No problem. I'll go ahead and turn it off for yeah. now. Okay. For those of you who um, do not know me, my name is Laura Lee Jones and I work with the Expanded Food and Nutrition Education Program. And we have been a partner with Faithful Families um, since the beginning. Um, and so I'm very excited to um, pinch hit for Annie today who is in the western part of North Carolina conducting a Faithful Families training um, to bring to you this webinar called Connecting Chronic Disease Programs. Um, presenting today are Sharon Jackson And Sharon is the Diabetes Prevention Specialist with the Division of Public Health, Community and Clinical Connections for Prevention and Health Branch uh, with the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services. Our second presenter today is Kelly Nordby. Uh, Kelly is with the Eat Smart and Live More Way Less. She's the coordinator for that program. Um, and also a coordinator for Eat Smart, Move More, Prevent Diabetes with NC State University. And our final presenter today is Janelle Watts. Janelle is a data analyst and nutrition associate with North Carolina State University's SNAP-Ed program called Steps to Health. Um, and we're with the Department of Agricultural and Human Sciences. So at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Sharon. Thanks, Laura Lee. Um, is someone going to be advancing my slides for me, or am I doing that um, on my own? Either either way you would like. You, you can advance the slides. It's just the um, advance arrow. Or if you want me to do it, I will do it. Okay, because I don't I, need the advance. Sharon, arrow. thank you so much. I just gave you moderator privileges, so you should be able to do it now. Okay. It's up in the right hand corner. <laughs> All right. Great. Okay, I speak now. Okay. So my name is Sharon Jackson and I'm the diabetes prevention specialist um, for the North Carolina Division of Public Health. And um I just wanted to give a few um background on the Diabetes Prevention Program. Um, the Diabetes Prevention Program is a CDC-recognized lifestyle change program um, 
are lifestyle change programs that are proven to work. They are based on research led by the National Institutes of Health. Um, and this research showed that people with prediabetes who take part in a structured lifestyle change program can cut their risk of developing type 2 diabetes by 58%, and that's 71% for people over 60 years of age. Um, and this finding was the result of the program helping people lose 5 to 7 percent of their body weight through healthier eating and 150 minutes of physical activity per week. The impact of this program can last um, for years to come. The research also found that even after 10 years um, of having per participated in the diabetes prevention program, people who completed it um, were one-third less likely to develop type 2 diabetes. So in North Carolina, um, there are several diabetes prevention programs. Over the course of the last year, the landscape of DPP in North Carolina has changed tremendously. Um, we have a variety of options that use different curriculums and different de delivery methods to serve the citizens of North Carolina. Um, but it is important to note that each curriculum that is used is CDC approved and all programs um, within the state of North Carolina um, that operate under the umbrella of the Diabetes Prevention Programs are CDC recognized lifestyle change programs, which means they have a pending or um, full recognition from the CDC. These programs are located in a variety of places throughout the community, including health care clinics, community-based organizations, faith-based organizations, pharmacies, wellness centers, work sites, cooperative extension offices, and university-based continuing education programs. <clears throat> we also have an online option here in North Carolina, which is the Eat Smart, Move More, Prevent Diabetes, which Kelly will talk to you a little bit um, later about. I will go over each type of DPP briefly in the next few slides with the exception of the HELP PD um, or the HELP Prevent Diabetes curriculum. The on-site diabetes prevention program supports proving lifestyle change programs across the state of North Carolina to prevent or delay type 2 diabetes. The on-site DPP is a one-year lifestyle change intervention designed to help people with prediabetes prevent or delay the development of type 2 diabetes. This um, program, as I stated earlier, was designed to achieve two primary goals, which is to reduce and maintain individual weight loss by 5 to 7 percent and um, to have the participants participate in regular phys physical activity up to that 100, up to or above the 150 minutes that I mentioned earlier. Classes are located in, community, in the community in various counties across North Carolina by providers that have um, been trained as lifestyle coaches and again been recognized by the CDC. Uh, with the exception of the HELP, P HELP PD curriculum, which is administered by Wake Forest University um, and is delivered slightly different than the um, other DPPs, uh, it's a little longer, it's 24 weeks and in the first six months and in the second six months, then um, they have six to eight sessions. Um, the DPP overall is delivered in two phases in the first phase, it's um, 16 one-hour class sessions that are delivered over the first six months. And then the second phase, which is also um, sometimes referred to as the maintenance phase, is delivered in the second six months. And um, you can implement a step-down model where you go from every two weeks to once a month, or you can go straight to once a month after the first six uh, months. Um, in that six to one, six to eight one hour sessions. Um, and as I stated earlier, the lifestyle coaches facilitate these groups. And um, that's a key component of implementing the DPP. 
The online DPP, um, which Kelly will talk to you a little bit later about, um, is the Eat Smart, Move More, Prevent Diabetes. Um, is delivered in the same um, way that I just stated, except that it's online. And Kelly will go into the nuances of that particular program. The Diabetes Free NC portal is not actually a program. It's a way that we here at the Division of Public Health um, link the online and the um, on-site programs as it relates to state health plan members. Um, state health plan members that plan to participate in classes offered online and on-site must register through the Diabetes Free NC um, web portal to ensure that they are eligible to receive the um, DPP as a covered benefit. Um, if the plan member does not register through this portal, the program is not their the site's program is not reimbursable by the state health plan. And currently sites cannot bill the state health health plan directly for um, claims for the Diabetes Prevention Program. So those are submitted on, on behalf of the sites by um, DPH. So um, the brand new DPP that is here in North Carolina is the minority DPP. Um, and which we are referring to as MDPP, not to be confused with the Medicare DPP. Um, and I know that they are thinking about changing their name. Um, so just bear with us while we work out all of these acronyms. <laughs> The primary goal of the minority DPP is to increase minority access and participation in the diabetes prevention programs in North Carolina. And um, this, the funding for the minority DPP um, was made available this year from the General Assembly. Um, the funding is, uh, was given to the Office of Minority Health. and. Um, they are working in consultation with us here at DPP in order to administer this program. The Minority Diabetes Prevention Program is intended to be a collaborative effort between local health departments, um, lo local health care providers, and community organizations across North Carolina. Um, it's a multi-county collaborative that can engage and screen and deliver the diabetes prevention lifestyle change classes to minority communities. Um, it is administered regionally in nine health director regions. And the program has um, three major components, which is awareness and marketing campaign, community screenings for DPP, um, and for prediabetes and referrals to the DPP program. And they use the PREVENT um, T2 curriculum both in English and Spanish. The main difference is that the, this program has state appropriated funds and it also has more stringent reporting requirements and a robust incentive plan. All right, so did you know that one out of three adults in the U.S. has prediabetes and only 7% know that they have it? In North Carolina, diabetes is the seventh leading cause of death. And um, it is estimated that 750,000, which is one in 10 North Carolina adults, have been diagnosed with diabetes and an estimated 2.5 million um, North Carolinians may have prediabetes. The main takeaway from this slide is without lifestyle change, changes to improve their health, 15 to 30 percent of people with prediabetes will develop type 2 diabetes within five years, which is why this intervention is so important. So on your faith community assessments, um, there is a question that asks if the faith community is interested in hosting a diabetes prevention class. Um, 
and faith communities, if a faith community answers yes to this question, faith communities can make a difference in using DPP by raising awareness about prediabetes, offering those screenings, and referring to a program within your community, um, conducting prediabetes activities, and creating a healthier space. So how can we work together? A faith community that's interested in um, providing a healthier, creating a healthier space can do things outside of becoming a diabetes prevention um, site. They can hang signage promoting the diabetes pro prevention programs that are already located within their community. Um, this will provide information about the value of DPP and directs individuals to our diabetes Diabetes 3 and C website where they can find out more information about the programs. If you want to enhance your effort, you can offer the paper screening test for prediabetes. That way people actually know what their risks are, whether or not this class will be beneficial to them, um, and they will not just have the information that they are or possibly pre-diabetic, but they will know that there is something that they can actually do about that um, particular condition. And if you want to help out in it, a work together in an advanced way, you can become a DPP delivery site. Um, this is a little bit more intense. It requires two days of training for staff who will deliver the program or training for the lifestyle coaches. Um, it requires a commitment to delivering the classes once per week for 16 weeks and once per month for six to eight months because this is a year-long program. Um, gathering and inputting data into a web-based um, web based database and receiving the reimbursement for those who qualify for reimbursement. At current, only the state health plan and um, I, only the state health plan is covering DPP as a cover, offering DPP as a cover benefits to its members, but uh, Medicare will be offering it starting in 2018 and um, to those sites who are fully recognized. And we also have some scholarships for those who are Medicaid eligible, and they are within certain regions of the state. Um, here I just listed some resources. Um, I have said over and over diabetesfreenc.com. This is a uh, website where you can find out more about the online and on-site diabetes prevention classes, see where they are currently being offered, register for those classes if you are a state health plan member, and just learn more overall about the program. Diabetesnc.com um, has the North Carolina Guide to Diabetes Prevention and Management. Um, it has a lot of information for different um, providers, community organizations about what you can do to um, engage in the diabetes and pre-diabetes um, and diabetes prevention efforts. And there's also a Faith um, Leaders Toolkit on the CDC's website, and I've provided that link here. Um, if you are more interested in diabetes prevention, um, the diabetes prevention program and how it operates and just learning more about um, what the lifestyle coaches actually do, and you may join our Lifestyle Coach Network, and we have an upcoming webinar on Wednesday, December the 14th from 10 to uh, 1030 to 1130. If you would like to join that, just give me, um, send me an email and I will add you to the listserv. And um, that's all I have. If there are any questions, I don't know if I'm taking them now or if I'm waiting till the end. I think we have time for a few more, a few questions at this point, if anyone has any um, for Sharon. Okay, hearing no questions, we'll go ahead and transition to Kelly. Okay, thank you so much for having me. 
I'm excited to be here to tell you about the Eat Smart, Move More, Prevent Diabetes online program. And I thank you to Sharon for giving me a nice introduction on the program. And I will um, be repeating some of the statistics about the prevalence of, of prediabetes um, across the country, actually, in just a moment. But again, this is a partnership program between NC State University and the North Carolina Division of Public Health. And even though um, this is a true partnership um, and in that we, uh, about five of us, are located here at the Division of Public Health. However, we are all NC State University employees. Um, so I'm excited to be with, um, with you guys to tell you about this program. So just really quickly, um, what is prediabetes? Um, this is, you know, an A1C level of between 5.7 and 6.4. Um, it's a condition that is before the actual type 2 diabetes is diagnosed. Um, and so we'll get into how we uh, screen for that in just a moment. So again, why is this important? One out of three adults in the nation has prediabetes. This is the same statistic as here in North Carolina. Without the intervention, up to 30% will go on to develop full um, type 2 diabetes within five years. And a structured lifestyle change program, of course, this is the same data that all, all of the DPP programs across the country is, are based upon, um, will cut that risk by 58%. So that's why it's so important. Um, and again, prevention um, can help those that have been, that, so that they're not diagnosed with um, type 2 diabetes. So, so achieving and maintaining a healthy weight by eating smart and moving more has been shown to prevent type 2 diabetes. And these key concepts are what are built into um, the Eat Smart, Move More, Prevent Diabetes, again, which is an online program. The three key tenets of the program are planning, tracking, and living mindfully. So planning opportunities for physical activity, planning uh, opportunities for healthy snacks, um, and meals, um, planning ahead of time, tracking, so tracking both the daily bouts of physical activity and um, everything that is eaten or, or consumed, um, as well as living mindfully. So not just going through the same motions of um, in the, in, with the same habits without thinking through those, but really living in the moment, being present, being mindful about how full or how um, or how hungry we are before we actually eat. Um, all of these things are the same three key tenets that we implement in the Eat Smart, Move More, Way Less program. And these are the same foundational tenets that the uh, Eat Smart, Move More, Prevent Diabetes program is based upon as well. So Eat Smart, Move More, Prevent Diabetes, as um, Sharon was mentioning, a lot of the other programs across the state use the PREVENT T2 program, which is a CDC-based curriculum. We uh, developed a custom-developed program based on what the evidence states and what CDC requires. So it's not exact, it's not the same program as what other, um, what other uh, you know, entities and locations are using across the state. However, um, we were, we did go through the same approval process as all of those um, other entities and did receive approval uh, last year and began rolling this program out in just May of 2016. Again, this is based upon those strategies to proven to prevent or delay type 2 diabetes. And it is a 12-month program, just like, the, uh, just like the Prevent T2 program, divided into two phases with 16 lessons in phase one and eight lessons in phase two. And it is delivered in an interactive real-time online format using distance education technology, a very similar platform to what we're using here with Blackboard Collaborate. We use uh, Go to Training. So those evidence-based strategies are listed here. Um, a lot of these are the same strategies that we talk about in Eat Smart, Move More, Way Less, because achieving and maintaining a healthy weight is um, the foundational piece to preventing diabetes. So a couple of the differences are um, we talk about sleep in prevent diabetes, and we also talk about managing stress. We have a whole lesson on being mindful. Um, so there's, there's definitely 
the foundational piece of Eat Smart Move More Way less lessons, and then we also add on um, with, with some other uh, lessons in phase two of the program. So if we sort of look at the timeline over the course of a year, we start out with 12 weekly sessions. Then we uh, taper the intensity of, of the frequency of classes to bi-weekly. Um, these are all in phase one. Then we move to phase two, three lessons held every three weeks, and then five lessons held every month. And this was per the suggestion of CDC to so, sort of um, move people into more an intense schedule, and then um, phase two being more of a maintenance schedule. So. Eat Smart Move More Prevent Diabetes is delivered using the evidence, same evidence-based technology that we use for Eat Smart Move More Way Less. And I, I keep referring to Eat Smart Move More Way Less because that program was developed uh, back in 2009 and has been delivered in the online real-time format since 2011. So we have a lot of published articles about the outcomes from that delivery method all with very successful findings, which um, gave us uh, a lot of confidence when we developed the Eat Smart Move More Prevent Diabetes program that the online delivery in the real-time format would be equally as effective. So one of the aspects that we discuss in this program is problem solving. And so because it is a real-time online format, Participants have the ability to interact with one another in real time. So we do record the classes for the option of watching them later if someone did happen to miss the class or they just want to review the material again. However, the main lessons are delivered again real time um, in a real time interactive environment. So it allows things like problem solving to take place during the class. So during this time, um, because everyone's sort of facing the same challenges, um, a lot of the same challenges, it allows you know, the problem to be described, for the group to brainstorm options for solving the problem, then allowing perhaps one volunteer to um, pick one of the options that, that are discussed, and then they put a positive um, action plan in place to, for the chosen um, option, and then try it. And then next week in class, report back to the group about how successful they were in implementing that particular idea. Social cues are also mentioned um, in, during each of the lessons. And so social cues are, um, and these are specifically related to healthy eating or physical activity behaviors that are changed um, based on the presence of other people. And so we talk about how these could possibly be negative and how we can reverse these to be more positive um, responses to social cues and adding helpful social cues. Because so much of our eating and physical activity behaviors are influenced by other people. So during each session, the program participants will attend class again online in an interactive environment from their computer or mobile device. So this is um, one of the key features of the program is that it is accessible from mobile devices, so tablets, um, phones, and then of course desktop and laptop as well. Um, they're empowered to make healthy eating and physical activity choices, identify ways to manage stress, um, learning those key strategies to achieving and maintaining a healthy weight. The connecting with others working on similar goals is so important, um, such a huge source of support. And um, it'll be interesting to see how we, when, as we're continuing to offer this program, how um, this might differ a little bit um, because these participants have a looming chronic disease risk. So they're not, um, they're, they, they seem so far to be even more invested um, because they are, because they actually have been told by their doctor or another health care professional that they are at risk for, you know, this, this disease. Um, and then they receive personalized support outside of class from their instructor. So um, let me just go back to this slide with the schedule for just a second. So even though the classes are only held according to this schedule, every single week they receive a personal touch point from their instructor. 
so that they, um, and then at any time they can ask a question of their instructor outside of class. And that's through what we call the My Progress Portal, which is a secure portal where they can we track their weekly progress as well as communicate and ask questions of their instructor. This is also where they enter their minutes of physical activity, which is something that we have to report back to CDC, um, as well as their weekly weight. They enter their beginning and ending measurements for blood pressure, waist circumference, and A1C. Um, and so this is, this is the place where a lot of that outside of class support takes place. The um, participants also receive two magazines, one in phase one and one in phase two. That includes a lot of what's covered during each of the lessons as well as, as additional resources and tools um, that are helpful outside of class, like recipes. We do a whole lesson on cook, cooking smart and the different tools that are used when you're trying to cook more meals at home, which is one of the key uh, strategies that we talk about in the program, as well as providing lots of healthy weeknight quick recipes that can be, um, you know, that, that they can make um, as part of their healthy diet. So there is an attendance requirement, so all participants must attend at least nine out of the first 16 phase one sessions in order to continue to phase two of the program. Uh, the registration is available on esmmpreventdiabetes.com, and this is a linkable site to the Diabetes Free MC site that Sharon mentioned. Um, there is a pre-diabetes screening that is done prior to allowing someone to register, and the way that we have this set up is that participants can either qualify through their A1C, which is a 5.7 to 6.4 level, um, would make them eligible to participate in the program, or if they score a 9 or higher in the CDC pre-diabetes screening tool, um, then they would also be eligible. We do need, still need to collect an A1C um, at some point in the program, um, preferably in the first few months of the program, we need to collect an A1C for CDC reporting purposes. However, if someone does not have a CD, uh, I'm sorry, an A1C at the time of registration, they, they can still register if they meet that criteria on the screening tool. And we do roll out, one of, the, one of the positives with the online program is that we have the flexibility to be able to offer a new series every month with the exception of July, November, and December. Um, so you can see the 2017 class series schedule there. The program cost. So the cost of the program, the true cost that it costs us to operate on our not-for-profit model is $449 per participant for the entire 12-month program. Currently, as Sharon mentioned, the North Carolina State Health Plan covers the cost of the program for its members. So members only pay $25 and the remaining cost is covered by the plan. We also offer um, a number of free resources um, that I just want to tell you very briefly about. So the first are blogs, um, and these are just current content written by our staff, written by very passionate participants, written by um, those that work with us in the branch, um, uh, with Sharon Jackson and, and her folks over in the, on the branch side, um, the Division of Public Health side. Um, everyone contributes to these blogs and it just keeps everything really, our website really fresh and interesting and for our current participants or for prospective participants. Uh, we also have newsletters. So when someone signs up to receive a newsletter, which is delivered bi-monthly on the off months when there is not a newsletter, a Nutrition Decisions webinar is held. And these are led by Dr. Carolyn Dunn, which I think you all are familiar with. Um, these are held bi-monthly again on Fridays at noon. It's available free for anyone, whether or not you're participating in one of our programs or not. Um, the sign up is here on the website, and if you just go to tools and you can sign up to participate in the webinars. These are recorded for those who are not able to attend the live sessions. And these are some of the previous um, topics that we've covered during these webinars. 
So the next webinar will actually be this coming Friday at noon. And I believe that we have more than 700 people registered for this webinar right now. And, and unfortunately, the registration is capped due to the capacity of the webinar. Um, however, again, the, all of the webinars will be recorded and will be housed on our website after the fact. So just be checking, um, checking back for that. This particular series that we're in right now is called Steps to Eating the Medway. And we're taking each of the main tips of incorporating med instead of meds into your um, into your dietary plan and and kind of pulling them out and having an individual webinar because of this this topic is just such a popular and hot topic right now. So this coming um, this coming week's webinar is on changing your protein and how to how to flip those and make them into med choices. We also are running the Holiday Challenge, um, which I think a lot of you have heard about. This is a free online seven-week program that runs from the week before Thanksgiving to New Year's. Um, we are currently in the middle of this right now. And we've already surpassed our 2015 numbers. So right now we have 15,000 people that have signed up for the challenge from all 50 states and all 100 counties represented. Um, all in, you can register throughout the course of the program. So it's never too late to register. You can just go online to that website there um, and, and feel free to distribute this widely. This is a completely free program. And again, the main goal is just to maintain and not gain weight over um, the holidays. And that's all I have. And I will either turn it back to Laura Lee or Janelle. Thank you, Kelly. Does anyone have any questions for Kelly before we move forward? OK. If not, Janelle, take us home. All right. Just want to do another quick check. Can everybody hear me OK? My computer has been very finicky lately. Thanks, Cher. Thanks, Kelly. All right. Um, so I am Janelle, and I am here to talk to you about a pilot project that we are currently calling Faithful Families Plus. Um, but before I dive in and tell you about Faithful Families Plus, I need to give you a little bit of background um, about a few other programs and how this project came to be. So bear with me. I have a couple more program names and acronyms to, to toss at you. So first, I need to start by talking about SNAP. SNAP is the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, which is formerly known as food stamps. And it's part of the US domestic hunger safety net. It provides economic benefits to eligible low-income individuals and families for food purchases. So I think we're all pretty familiar with SNAP or some of the so-called food stamps. SNAP-Ed, on the other hand, is the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program Education. So it's the nutrition promotion and obesity prevention component of SNAP. So there's SNAP and then there's SNAP-Ed. And they are two different things. The goal of SNAP-Ed is to improve the likelihood that people who are eligible for SNAP will make healthy food choices and lifestyle choices that will help prevent obesity. It's a federal grant program, uh, program, and there are projects in all 50 states. And, and in some states, there are even um, multiple SNAP-Ed projects, including in North Carolina. We have several um, SNAP-Ed programs here just in North Carolina. So North Carolina State University's SNAP-Ed program is called Steps to Health. And this is where I come in because I'm on the Steps to Health team. So Steps to Health educates and inspires a limited resource, resource North Carolinians to eat smart and move more through nutrition education and policy systems and environmental change initiatives targeting elementary age children, adults, older, older adults, families, and Spanish-speaking families. Our nutrition education programs are delivered in person as, to oppose, as opposed to some of the online options we've been talking about already today. So they're delivered in person by county-based educators across North Carolina in collaboration with Cooperative Extension. 
So the Steps to Health Adult Nutrition Education Program is really what I'm here to talk to you about today. So our adult program is a six-week chronic disease prevention and management program. The goal of the program is to inform, empower, and motivate participants by giving them strategies and skills to help them change their eating and their physical activity habits. Um, the strategies that we teach them are consistent with my plate and also the most current 2015 dietary guidelines for Americans. The core of our program is the idea of setting smart personal health goals and finding small realistic ways to work towards those goals based on the topics and the strategies that are discussed. And we're realistic about this. We know this is only a six-week program, and so we encourage our educators teaching the program to, to make sure that point is clear, that um, it is important for participants to set a goal, but to make sure that it's realistic in a six-week time frame. So we're just looking for very small changes at this point. It's not nearly as comprehensive um, as a longer-term program. As I said, it has six sessions. Um, they're meant to be taught once a week. You can see the topics of each session are right here. These are the titles, the actual titles of each session. Um, and each one connects nutrition and lifestyle choices um, with activity or, excuse me, with strategies that can help prevent or manage chronic disease. Each session includes some lecture with PowerPoints, um, discussion, a taste test, and food demonstration an activity break, and participant goal setting. So they set a goal at the beginning, but they, they work on it and think about it every session for those six weeks. Participants receive an informative and interactive handout at each session, as well as a cookbook, a spice shaker, a water bottle, and a certificate of completion. Throughout the program, we discuss the importance of knowing your numbers. So we encourage them to find their BMI, their blood pressure, and their cholesterol, cholesterol um, numbers. We don't collect these or record these, but we encourage the participants to connect with their numbers so they know their potential health risks and their current health status so that they can make their, their goals uh, more pertinent and realistic for them. We discuss mindful living and we practice mindful eating. We cover the recommended amounts and types of physical activity, but we also encourage participants to find ways to be active throughout the day. Um, we encourage them to find activities that they really enjoy, and we encourage them to seek out places in their community where they can move more. So this last part is a key place where our policy systems and environmental change efforts can come into play. In our lesson on sodium, we talk about the new guidelines around sodium and how sodium limits or how much sodium you eat can affect your health. But we don't just say eat less salt. Uh, we try to talk about where we find salt in foods and how to start making small adjustments to help cut back. This is where the spice jar comes in because we have participants make their own salt-free spice mix that they can take home. In our session on fat, we distinguish between the different types of fat and how to include fat in your diet to help lower disease risk rather than raise it. And in our session on added sugar, we differentiate between natural sugar and added sugar. We explain the upcoming changes to the nutrition facts label regarding sugar, and we discuss ways to reduce added sugar in what we drink and eat. And then finally, at the end of the six weeks, um, at the very last session, we lead participants in reflecting on and discussing their challenges and their successes in incorporating what they learned into their everyday lives. We remind them to celebrate their successes no matter how small they may seem, reminding them that six weeks is not a very long uh, time period, but that they may have still made some positive changes during the six weeks that they had in the class. And then we, we encourage them to continue the journey as individuals and as a group. 
Our sepsis health adult program was developed here at NC State and has been delivered in counties around North Carolina since about 2012. And we've seen really great success with the program so far um, and pretty consistent outcomes every single year. Consistently every year, over 90% of participants report that they make progress towards their health goal um, that they set during the program. Many of, their, many of them achieve the goal, but 90% at least make some solid progress towards their goal. And over 75% have made positive behavior changes, such as eating more fruits and vegetables, reducing their sodium, drinking less sugar-sweetened beverages, consuming less saturated fat and added sugar, and moving more. So about two years ago, Steps to Health started a pilot project with faithful families and FDEP, which can't remember if Laura Lee said or not, but Laura Lee is with FNEP, and FNEP is the Expanded Food and Nutrition Education Program. So this is a pilot between these three groups. Um, and as part of this new project, we took the Steps to Health Adult Nutrition Program, which is what I've been sharing for the past couple slides, and we adapted it for faith-based settings. So it contains the exact same nutrition content and follows the same format as our original program, but it mirrors faithful families. The primary um, similarity is that it incorporates the lay leader to guide faith-based discussions connected to the content throughout the sessions. Right now, it is being used as a part two for Faithful Families, which is why we decided to call the project Faithful Families Plus. We felt that our adapted adult program works well as a part two because even though it's also an entry-level nutrition education program, it complements and enhances the topics that are taught in faithful families, but providing a slightly different angle with a greater focus on disease prevention. I wish I could tell you more information about it, but I think the safest thing to say right now is that we are currently working through how to expand Faithful Families Plus beyond the pilot project. Um, we're looking into a couple different options. So we will make sure to send out details when we have them. And for now, in the meantime, if you are interested in learning more about this project or uh, about Steps to Health, or, excuse me, about Faithful Families Plus and whether or not it might be a good option for your group, then please contact me. I don't think my email was on the original um, introduction page with my picture, but that is my email um, or give me a call and we'd be happy to hear what you have in mind. And that is it for me. Um, thank you very much. And I want to thank uh, Sharon, Kelly, and Janelle for uh, lending their expertise to this webinar today. Are there any questions at this time? If you have a question, you may type it in the chat box, or um, if you want to hit your talk button, you can hit your talk button and um, ask the question. So Jane does ask a question. What can we do for folks who are not in the state health plan? Jane, are you directing that question to the main seat income guidelines for take control? Um, this is Sharon. I'm not familiar with take control, but um, as I stated earlier, we do have um, Medicaid, scholarship, Medicaid eligible scholarships for the on-site programs um, in um, health director regions 1, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Um, outside of that, there, um, there are no other uh, reimbursable program um, re reimbursement for the DPP program outside of the state health plan and Medicaid eligible for us doesn't mean that they actually receive Medicaid it means that they are at 200 percent below poverty so our guidelines are a little bit more inclusive of those who actually work um, but don't meet the qualifications for receiving Medicaid.
Cade. So I hope that's helpful. Janelle, I believe the next question is to you. Can you elaborate on the Faithful Families Plus pilot program? What has been done so far and what do you hope to accomplish? Um, I'm, let me see. Uh, well, so far we've, we've tried a couple different models and that's primarily in the, the delivery of the program. Um, who's delivering the program in what setting? Um, so it's, and that's just working out details between FNEP and SNAP-Ed and our different federal guidelines. Um, so I think that's primarily what we've been working through so far, and I think Laura Lee could probably um, agree with that as well. So we're looking at, does it make sense to um, package it as one giant program um, with faith communities agreeing to do Faithful Families and the Part 2, um, or is, is the Part 2 something that can um, be, be taught at a separate time, going back to the, those faith communities? Um, so we're, I really can't give you a solid answer at this point um, because we're, we're trying to figure out what the model should look like. Um, but we're thinking that it will be offered as, um, as a six-week follow-up to Faithful Families, where Faithful Families has already been delivered, um, but we're still working through it and deciding. Megan, I would just add um, one thing to what Janelle said in regards to Faithful Families Plus. Um, the pilot program came about because many of the families that had participated in Faithful Families wanted a part two. And um, Steps to Health, uh, or Take Control actually, focuses on chronic disease and has, um, has that as its focus for all of the lessons. And that seemed to be the next step that um, faith communities did want. So um, I think it's going well so far, but we are, as Janelle shared, um, testing what is the best approach for this particular pilot or for this particular program. Are there other questions? Okay. If not, thank you once again um, to Sharon, to Kelly, and to Janelle. Um, it was a wonderful webinar, and we appreciate you joining us. Uh, and I will bid you adieu and wish you happy holidays. Thanks, Laura Lee. Thank you for stepping in for Annie, and it was Good to be on with Kelly and some other familiar names. So thank you, everyone.